Hi, my name is Josh Campbell. I'm a geographer at the Humanitarian Information Unit, the Department of State. I'm here tonight to tell you about a project that we tentatively call Imagery to the Crowd. It's essentially about how we can link together the purchasing power of the United States government in terms of its ability to buy commercial high-resolution satellite imagery and share that with the volunteer technical community. Now, the HIU, uh, we work on uh, informing senior policymakers at state and aid um, and using a geographic perspective. So we, now, we know that geographic data is key to disaster response and to sustainable development. Oftentimes, we don't have the data we need, but with crowdsourcing, we have a new vehicle for trying to get data in a new way. So this methodology was inspired by the Haiti response, particularly the OpenStreetMap community. The broader question of how did Haiti go from being barely mapped to within a couple of weeks being mapped at a detail to support baseline humanitarian operations. So the idea is, or the question was, is this repeatable? Was Haiti a perfect storm, a confluence of things, or was it a series of variables that worked together? We believe the latter, that an existing OSM community and empowered by satellite imagery enabled that production, particularly not just imagery, but service-enabled imagery, web service-enabled imagery. So the Haiti crisis map here shows um, how the access to WMS services could feed out to the crowd. So if we were going to replicate this and we had to build an information infrastructure capable of supporting imagery serving, what are some of the characteristics? Big data, fast internet, we want to make it easy and fast for volunteer mappers. So for those that don't work much with imagery, this is what it looks like on disk. It's big, it's gnarly, um, and then when you tile it up and serve it out, you actually increase its data size approximately 4x. So now here's the crux of it. The United States government buys a lot of commercial satellite imagery, and contractually we have an ability to share it. So we had to work through the legal and policy issues associated with that, and we decided to run an experiment. It was during the Horn of Africa famine, and we decided to try to map refugee camps. So working with the humanitarian open street map community and the OSM tasking server, we fed 10 tiled map services of refugee camps into the tasking server and allowed individuals to come in and help map. This is what the Boclamano refugee camp looked like um, on May 21st. We kept these caches open for two days, 48 hours. In that time, approximately 29 mappers came in and provided 57,000 nodes of data. So two days later, at the same scale, this is what one of the 10 camps looked like. All of them experienced this level of increase in data. As we zoom in, you'll see that not, did we, not only did we just get roads and streets, we also got footways, paths, buildings, extent of the camp, hydrologic features, date, more data than we actually asked for. If we move down the road a little bit to the Melkadita camp, you'll see that there's increased uh, building concentration. And what this, what this project showed was that, yes, if we put the imagery out there, people would come and map it. But, and it proved that our tech stack worked to support it. But we needed to tie it into decision making on the ground and mechanisms to get more increased data, like the attribution of data on the ground, the human geography. So can we come up with a cycle where we can enable the crowd to produce data and tie it into mechanisms to either link into ground-based decision making or more attribution? For the second experiment, we worked with Robert Bannock at the American Red Cross International Services Division um, in a project that he was running for uh, helping to train fire responders in Uganda. So we served up imagery, again, out of the HIU stack. They held a mapping party. And you can see here the, tight, the density and granularity of the data that they were producing. Next, Robert went to Uganda and actually worked with locals on the ground to train them how to use OpenStreetMap and to work with fire responders um, on on helping to understand the distribution of fire risk in their own community. This is a little tough to see, but you can, the locals are now annotating the data. We're getting an increased stream of like place names and restaurant names and things coming back. This map for me is the key. This is the proxim this is the density of grass huts, which essentially acts as a proxy for the fire risk in the community. And now this, this information is now in the hands of the local community. Uh, something that should improve the lives of people in Gulu. Now, this was a prototype capability for us. It was two experiments. We're working to try to expand it into a baseline capability. Stay tuned. We hope to have some information out in the coming months about how we might be able to stand this up over a longer term. 
Thanks to all the volunteers. Thanks to the Humanitarian Open Street Map team for all the help. Uh, we really appreciate it. And none of this would be possible without you. We're proud to be able to help support you. Thank you.